What's up everyone, Ben here, Black Dirt Cycles, and welcome back to the Boosted Bits Up build. You know what you gotta do, head into the kitchen, grab yourself a cup of coffee, ooh, nice cup there Ben. Make your way out to the workshop where I'll already be cutting, welding, and grinding the frame, making it look silky smooth for the next part of the project. See you out there. So, move back inside now. On the, uh, the high plaps there, you just see me cut the remainder of the, the frame rails off and start smoothing a little bit out. You will notice as well, swapping backwards and forwards between discs that I was using. So I've got a brand new, I don't know where they've gone now, they're still outside on the bench. Brand new disc for getting the bigger of the, the meat off and then I go to a disc that's a bit sort of worn out if you like, so it doesn't take as much off. Then I drop down to a file. So the reason I drop down to a file is if I spin you around, if you look on these frame rails, can you see that little dark spot there? When I run the file work like an angle over the metal like that, and then I come back at another angle, oh sorry man, there, so if I sort of, sort of do this with a file, what it does is just like doing body work, it just highlights low spots and high spots. So let's put a low spot just there, so I can keep going at that with a file and feather it out until it's nice and smooth, but the camera really picks it up quite well actually with the light from the workshop, and there's just a little low spot there as well that's cool isn't it right so yeah that's done i've countersunk the hole these were inside the the frame rails i think it might be for drainage or uh, I, I really don't know but there's holes there i've just countersunk those same on the other side just had an additional hole here so countersunk it over there they're done and dusted they're ready for be welding i countersink them just so i can get a nice plug weld in there to get rid of those and get rid of that and then on the back here, yeah, you can see that one's all disced off nicely. Um, I'm just about to set you up in the tripod and I'm gonna make a template out of paper for this hole. Cut it out of steel, which I've got down there, and then get welding it in. Cool, let's get you mounted and then get into it. So first up, we need to make a, a template to be able to cut a piece of metal to go into this, uh, into this opening here. Now a little trick here, I learned this from um, Quick Bikes or Quickie off of YouTube. Go and give his channel a follow. He's currently doing um, a build called Asbo. Um, he has re-engineered the frame totally, absolutely crazy. But he's also given you the opportunity to win that bike for a very, very, very small fee. Um, and the more people that enter, the more money he has to put into the bike, the better the bike will be and the better the prize is for the person that wins it. I, I don't know how he's doing it, but it's, it's absolutely amazing. So go give uh, Quickie Bikes a, call, a follow. I'll put a link to him. Um, it'll probably be just sort of like up here, just above my head or here somewhere. But yeah, go, go check him out. Anyway, this is a tip that I learned from him for making little patches to go in holes. Clean piece of paper, dirty finger, lay the piece of paper over the hole, and then using your dirty finger, you can trace round the edge of the opening. And then what happens is, is the dirt just kind of seems to stick right to the outline. Take your scissors, and in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier, and cut it out. Offer it up, just give it a little check to make sure that it's it looks like it's going to fit and it's all okay. The, once it's transferred to a piece of metal, it may need trimming up and things like that. And uh, again, true Blue Peter fashion. Here's another one I made earlier. So using a little bit of um, uh, adhesive spray, I sprayed it on, stuck it onto the piece of metal uh, and cut round it. I've then spent a little bit of time fettling it, grinding it, so that I know that this fits perfectly into the hole. I've then chamfered the edges of it, cleaned it all up, deburred it, chamfered the edges of it, so once it goes in, I can get a nice good weld all the way around it. Um, magnet here, this is gonna help me line it up, so it just means that I can pretty much let go of it and just get in there, weld it, 
Um, I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to attack it first because I'm going to bend it as I weld it. So weld a bit, weld a bit, bend it. So I'm not sure whether to come from the bottom and work my way up or come from the top and work my way down. A part of me is saying do this bit first simply because it's it's longer before the bend starts so it be it should hold a little bit tighter. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll do it that way. So get the welder set up, get some tack welds, get it welded up, bent round, and then look at getting this disc off as well. So what do you think of my new fancy pants? 19 millimeter microphone. Um, I didn't want to keep clipping it in, running it through, clipping it in and all that kind of stuff went back and forth. So well, yeah, I just linked this idea from That's What I Reckon. I don't know if you follow him, really cool dude. Australia, does a bit of cooking, swears a fuckload. So yeah, anyway, right, so um, I welded this up, took it outside, hit record on the camera, but unfortunately I didn't hit record, I hit stop because as I was carrying out, I'd already hit record, um, so I stopped it rather than recorded it. It's a bit fucking stupid, wasn't it? Anyway, um, I didn't think, oh, you know, let's crack on. I thought, there's another side to do, so I'll catch up with it on that one. So I just disked it all off, made it look pretty, quickly squared some um, satin black paint on it just so that it protects it. Um, and the other reason I wanted to do that as well is because it makes it look complete. So when you're lining things up or trying to see how things look, if it's all the same colour, it's kind of easier rather than a bit all ickle pickle I'll carry on doing the same thing like when I'm fitting the tank and the seat unit and things like that. I'll probably squirt them all sat in black just so that it all makes them the same colour. Um, but yeah, so right, uh, I've done the other side. I welded up the other side. Uh, you see me weld that side. Um, so now you that one's already done. I'm not going to show you disking off, but I'm just going to sort of show you, you know, it's still fucking hot. Um, I'm going to fire the welder back up again in a second, fill up these couple of holes, um, and then yeah, get it all looking tickety boo. Ground off, um, a little squirt of paint on them just to make them look magic. Um, I'll probably call that one an episode actually because when I come back, or when we come back in the next episode after this one, I know it's a short one, it's just cutting, welding, grinding and you've not really seen much of that, but um, it's exciting now because what we can do is we can actually build this back up, we can put some forks in it, we can put the swing arm back in, um, yeah we can, we can build like half a bike. Then we can talk about what we're going to be doing with the seat unit because we need some alterations doing to the seat unit. The top rails need extending. Um, need to make some tabs that weld onto the frame that the seat unit can bolt onto, and it will sort of in relation to where the tank sits and the tank mount's going to be needed to made for the back because, oh, well, it just goes on and on and on. But there's things to do. It's good. So yeah, by the time you come back next episode, which will probably be episode what's that episode three episode four. It be episode four, episode four, and this is episode four. So it'll be episode five. You come back in episode five. You come back, and all this will be welded, disc off, looking pretty. And uh, yeah, let's get cracking. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>